Love Steven Universe, Rick and Morty, OKKO, and Gravity Falls? And do you love Christmas? Can pick up a Roundtable Limited Edition 2017 Christmas sweater. Reprints every three days, but will be gone by the end of the month. Order it now to get it before Christmas. Link in the description. Please. Please help. We're going on a trip in our favorite homeworld chip. Zooming through the sky, off color Einsteins. Welcome back to Crystal Clear on the Roundtable. Well, I'm Austrick Vox, and let's talk about the brand spanking new Steve special announced to air next month. We don't have many details on that special event, but we can infer this is indeed the next arc of Steve Universe, and will serve as the mid-season finale of the show. I say this because, much like seasons 2, 3, and 4, this season is around 24 to 26 episodes. Remember, half-hour installments and shorts eat up more numbers in production. Now, assuming this special event is similar to Steve Universe wanted, or the traditional Steven Bomb, it'll span either 4 or 5 episodes, taking us up to season 5, episode 14, or 15. And last season, we had Steven Universe, Out of This World, which took us up to Season 4, Episode 15. That will be all. The season's effective mid-finale. Now, we can't really apply this logic to Season 2 and 3, because at the time of production, they were still in the mindset that these were one big season. Messages received and log date were assumably written as mid-season finales. So preparing for the debut of this special event, our speculations and expectations should be set too high as it is a mid-season finale. They won't go crazy with everything they have up their sleeve, but something huge will still happen. Now, usually for a mid-season arcs in television, they set up a dire situation, but the conflict in the long run isn't completely resolved by the end. This is evident in the zoo arc. Greg's kidnapped by Blue Diamond, and even though he's retrieved by the end, we're left off on the note that has the diamonds having their eye on Earth's humans. Going into this upcoming arc, which for now we'll dub the Large of the Stars arc, I believe we have enough information to hypothesize a likely scenario. A few plot points this arc could be centered around, and where we'll be left off by the end. So sit back and put on your thinking caps because we're about to use our future vision. If any of this ends up coming to fruition, Spoiler warning, not saying it's 100% a synopsis of things to come. Just what I think could happen from what I piece together. Take everything with an obvious grain of salt. And when we get more information on these episodes, I'll make a follow-up video with new predictions. Now, we can make a safe bet that Act 1 of this arc, and the very next episode of the series, is Lars of the Stars. Not only were we first introduced to this episode at San Diego Comic Con this past July, but I believe we were also shown how this episode is going to end thanks to the trailer provided for us. This arc begins with Steven and Connie visiting Lars on Homeworld, and I just have to wonder, do the Gems know he's doing this? I'm going to assume the answer is no, all things considered. He didn't even inform them of his trial or the off colors. Gemcation solidified that. We're already off to a dangerous and somewhat irrational start. Steven, you gotta tell your caretakers what's up. They can come with you. Steven and Connie pop out of Lars's head, only to discover he and the off colors have hijacked a ship, the Sun Incinerator, from a gem named Emerald. And she is furious. Now, as we can tell from the sneak peek, Lars has become incredibly cocky in his new position of power, yet also respectful to his crew. The former half of this attitude may be his downfall. If we go off promotional art from this episode, surely after the end of the clip where Lars and the gang hack tell it out of there, Steven and Connie fuse into Stevani. I feel like from here we'll get some exposition, maybe elaboration on Lars and the off colors journey to the ship and their plan of action, which we can assume at this point is getting back to Earth. Yet, the serenity won't last for long. As Emerald arrives in another ship, Stevani somehow gets their hands on a smaller ship, likely one within the Sun Incinerator, and we get a little space battle. I hope the storyboarders just don't wing it, and it's actually an intense battle. Now, I can see Lars and the off-colors moving away or temporarily abandoning the Sun Incinerator, with plans to retrieve it later. Lars won't get his comeuppance for being cocky in the same episode we're introduced to that concept. But Stevani isn't so fortunate, as the episode ends with them getting shot down by Emerald's ship and spiraling down to an unknown planet. Separated from Lars, how will Stevani get back home? Will we even see Lars again for the remainder of this arc? We might. But now I want to throw out another character that may be useful in assisting Stevani home, Lapis. We know Lapis fled to an unknown location somewhere in space in fear of being caught up in the war. That was way too unspecific to not come back into play sooner rather than later. I'd like to imagine Lars wouldn't leave Steven and Connie hanging on a foreign planet, so unless Stevani claimed they'll just meet back up with them later, Lars could be searching for them while Emerald and any extra muscle she has, I'm rooting for Citrines to make their debut, don't just call it quits and pursue capturing Stevani. This is the premise of the next episode, Steven and Connie on an alien planet on the run from capture. I speculated this all the way back in July, but surprise surprise, guess who's on this planet? Lapis Lazuli. This reveal will likely be at the end of the episode. If they can pad out them exploring the planet, maybe being introduced to new races of species and their conflict with homeworld gems, leading up to Steven finding the barn. The barn makes it easily recognizable for Steven to go, wait, Lapis? Imagine the surprise on Lapis's face when she's reunited with Steven. She probably has a paradise with them only for Steven to go, nah, you know, just left my planet with Connie and ended up on an intergalactic shootout. A typical Tuesday noon for Steven Universe. Lapis won't be happy that Steven's attracted more danger, especially one that's rapidly approaching and would affect her. Lapis decides to help out Steven and 
Connie one last time, protecting them from Emerald. But after this, no more. They have to leave her alone and keep her out of it. We could even finally get Lapis seeing escapism if they dive deep into her current mental state. With Emerald on the hunt, this could actually lead to a humorous scene of Emerald awkwardly coming to the barn, asking Lapis if she's seen Stevani, Lars, or the off-colors. As Lapis in her usual awkward monotone fashion just goes, now, Emerald demands to come in and inspect the barn, just to be safe. And we could have a funny moment of Steven and Connie trying to blend in with the meat more, remaining undetected by Emerald. Now, I know what you're all thinking. I'm sick of gag villains. Why is almost every new homer antagonist we meet goofy and unmenacing? And my answer to that is, it's a kid show. I don't see Steven, Labs, and Connie actually getting away with this, and their cover being blown. But before Emerald and her crew strike, the corrupted speedster that paired out Bubble and sets to the barn is unleashed, creating a distraction. Emerald is completely disgusted and disturbed. She's never seen anything like a corrupted gem before. Now, unfortunately for our protagonist, Homeworld strapped and manages to take out the Corrupted Gem with something along the lines of the Stabilizer and captures the Corrupted Gem alongside everyone else. This takes us to the climax of the arc. Steven, Connie, and Lapis hostage on Emerald's ship. Flashbacks, am I right? Curious and taken aback by the Corrupted Gem, Emerald decides to report it to her higher up, which, considering her color scheme, is likely Yellow Diamond. Now, the last two January events have introduced Yellow Diamond and Blue Diamond in present day individually, so perhaps calling up her Diamond can tie it to White Diamond, finally making her debut. Perhaps all three Diamonds have gathered together to mediate the tension between Yellow and Blue. Or maybe Yellow Diamond fails to answer, so Emerald gets ballsy enough to call White Diamond. Either scenario would ideally lead to the same outcome. The Diamonds want Emerald and her crew to bring the Corrupted Gem straight to her. Afterwards, a disturbance breaks the tension and ups the stakes. Emerald is interrupted once again by Lars of the Stars. The off-colors are following Savani's trail when they found the crashed ship, the deserted barn, and Emerald's ship taking off in the distance, putting two and two together and coming to the rescue. The rescue is a success, and everyone makes it back to Sun Incinerator relatively unscathed. But Emerald's more desperate than ever to capture them. Alternatively, let's say Lars and the off-colors abandon the Sun Incinerator and go to the same planet Stevani crashes on. In that case, Lars and the off-colors are with Steven, Connie, and Lapis when they get captured. But Steven and Lars, both being human, are able to escape the cages. Assumedly, they're like the jam stabilizer thing from Jailbreak, and they manage to tiptoe past Emerald, steal the Sun Incinerator again, and leave the ship without being noticed. Lapis demands to just be taken back to her barn and left alone. Now, this experience was way too much and goes to show that she can't be caught up in another war. This leads to not Steven, not Connie, not Peridot, but Lars talking to Lapis, as I theorized prior. Lars was in a situation similar to Lapis. He too got sucked into something much bigger than him, and he's not going to just run from it. He too is ready to fight, and he's someone who's severely weaker than Lapis. This moment of confidentiality, similar situations, and well, showing his weakness, vulnerability, gets through to Lapis. Lars changes Lapis's mind. Lapis retrieves the barn, and everyone speeds home. We jump back to Beach City, the gems are taken aback, Steven and Connie surprise them with a ship. We have a ship again. A fast one at that. Lapis and Peridot have a heart-to-heart and reconcile. The off-colors begin their life on Earth, and Lars reunites with Sadie and his parents. But if you refer to my theory video on Lars's fate, you know this won't be permanent. Lars may be back on Earth, but it's very temporary, and he will be drawn back into space fairly soon. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my blind prediction on the upcoming arc of Steven Universe, using what we know and previous patterns used in the series. Lars and the off-colors come to Earth, Lapis is persuaded and convinced to fight alongside the Crystal Gems, we get a hopeful proper introduction to White Diamond, and left on a rather uneasy note. Yeah, everyone's safe, but now Emerald is determined to get her hands on Lars at all costs. She may either track her son's incinerator back to Earth, or be tipped off that's where everyone's residing. But as always, these are just my thoughts, and I'd love to hear yours. How would you like the next arc to go? Is this outline at all possible? Let's get a conversation going by commenting below, or tweeting your thoughts or lead to me at Austric Vox. You can follow the Roundtable on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at Roundtable Vids, and we're also on Snapchat at Roundtable YT. We have a Discord, official Amino app, and Patreon. Don't forget to check out and snag a Roundtable Christmas sweater. And if you do, thank you. Links to everything in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please sort of like, share it with your friends, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, it really helps us out. Hit that bell for notifications so you can stay in the loop of all things Steven. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a beautiful day. Austric Vox, signing out.